Good morning everyone. Welcome back to my channel. So today is just the continuation and I'm thinking the last episode in sorting out this unfinished project. So this is my last tag. I had considered swapping the tag out for another one but I've slept on it overnight and I've sort of looked through the book a few times and there's not one that really jumped out at me and sort of now that I've sort of thought about this one and um, I think I'm going to stay with it because it's yeah it was the one that I picked so I'm going to work with it. I've just then gone to my cupboard and I think this is what actually helped me is I've just picked up some fabrics that match these color tones and instead of doing an embroidery and building on it like I did the last one I think that's what made me think this was similar was if I go and embroider either side of this I'm sort of just repeating what the bunny one was so I think that was half my problem so what I'm going to do this time is I've picked out some fabrics that I believe tone with it and I'm just going to do layers around the tag that just celebrate the colors within the tag well, they don't really match and then maybe a little bit of lace here and there we'll see how we go so I'm sort of feeling quite inspired now that I've sort of put a color palette around my piece so a few little scraps I've got my bucket of lace nearby um, there might be bits and pieces in there that suit I know there's a pink organzery flower in here somewhere maybe over here there's a purple thing there's a bit of pink I'm gonna have a this here this has been rolling around in here for so long there's some more pink flowers I knew the more I'd look the more I'd see see that would work so I'm sort of there's another pink flower Let's have a little look through this first and dig out anything that sort of is lollipop pink. There's a bit of lace. Oh, another flower. Okay, now we've got something. Find a home for those things. They sort of look quite odd in my bucket of bits here. There's more of that purple. There's another flower that I cut out at some point but never did anything with. There's a bit of pink. Like some of these scraps, I don't even know why I keep them. Look at that. Like, what's the point? Mind you, there's a little bit of green that might be good. So it goes back in. Yellow. There's yellow on this tag. So that's another color that could come in. There's a little morsel that might be good. What else have we got in here? Oh, there's some, there's some doilies that I attempted to stain and a bit of the pink sort of drifted onto it. I don't know if the camera even picks it up. You can sort of see where the cochineal dribbled onto the doily. I can hear fudge bellowing again, for goodness sakes. That cat, he's just got so much to say. Okay, well that improved improved things somewhat. I've got some little elements. I think this is just going to be a mishmash page. Maybe I feel a bit mishmashy. Maybe I'm end of the year and I just feel like not thinking too hard. I think that's what it is. I honestly feel. I feel a little mentally drained. I don't know why. I haven't done a lot in the last few days. But I do. Must be just the end of the year. Okay, the end of the year, the start of the new year, what am I going to do? You know what I, I think it is? I've got the Roxy Creations Garden of Stitchery uh, down the garden path project in my head and it's really buzzing around and I've got like I think four ideas on the burn and this is sort of like directing me away from that. So I'm just like what do I do? How do I put this together? And I didn't want it just to be a quick throw together to make something. So I think that was annoying me all day yesterday that I felt like I was um, 
what's the word, just throwing it together. And I wanted to have a nice piece of stitchery that I could sti sit down to and enjoy. So I sort of left it a day just to sort of think a little. And I'm glad I did because clarity did end up coming. Okay, so where are we going to put this little guy? I sort of don't mind him in the bottom corner. I don't mind him being the feature in the center and everything radiates from him. It does feel good to be playing with pink. I sort of tend to go more neutrals. So this is sort of making me feel quite happy. Does colour do that? It does do that, doesn't it? Isn't there a science in that? Colour changes mood. I don't even know where I got these pieces. I'd say these come from some kits because um, being that they're perfect little squares, usually all my pieces are a bit dog-eared. I'm going to put that there. I do really like this fabric. This is one of mine. And I wouldn't mind if it sort of blends in and brings that blue in. Wouldn't mind a pop of that, but it's so busy. So I could do a little bit of embroidery on all of these if I'm so inclined. That one's probably better because I get more of a flower there. I might I think when you feel the pressure to create something, you need to just step away. You know, like a timeline or a, you've got to get it done because you just want the project finished. So you're sort of pushing it. I think that's not a good thing and you need to step away from it. I sort of want to make something out of those flowers. Maybe I need to bring that up a bit to give that a little bit more space. This is just a, a piece of quilt. It's not an old quilt, but it's probably probably 10 year old because it's definitely got that worn feeling, but it's got a synthetic on the back. So it's sort of old, but not. Now, I like that idea because I could muck around here with these little flowers and do something a little bit. What else have we got here? I like this blue, but is it the right blue? Not really. Take that away. This stripe's not bad. What about this piece of lace? I think this come from Rachel. It was in a pack of fabric that was knotted up that sort of reminded me of the packs that I got from her some time ago. So I just don't think that's, that's mine. Maybe that would be good to showcase this. Maybe these could come out from behind it, or is that too much? Very pretty. I don't mind that. It'd be nice to find them a home, but do I want to save them? Because they sort of, I think, would look good with the Roxy project. One of them I've got in my head is going to be um, soft pinks, dusty pinks, the dusty greens, real nearly, um, I don't know, I've got some bridal fabric and I'm thinking of using a bit of that. So I'm just wondering if I should just keep them for a moment. See, I think this is a bit of the problem. It's this Roxy Creations project. It's, see, that sort of goes with those tones. Maybe I use these little guys instead. Yeah, I don't mind that. 
just building on building on that with that little drizzle of paint in there. That's pretty. What else have we got? See, that's... I'll have to dig that linen out because that would go really well with that Roxy as a background. I might do that now while we're thinking of it. Hang on one second. Sorry, guys. Diverting my attention. Is that the same piece? No, but that's close. I'm going to leave this out on my desk to remind me to go hunting in my linen bucket because there must be a linen in there that is this colour. And it's sort of, see, this is the problem. This Roxy thing is just taking over my life. Goodness me, how silly. It's good fun, isn't it? We love it. We love it. I don't know what I'm trying to do here. Find a home. Mm. You know, am I wanting to cut that? What's going to go up here? Just looking at the TV screen. I'm going to just cut it. Don't overthink it. Just cut it. This is going to be real blush of pink. I'm happy with the way this is going because I think it'll look different in my book, which is good. It's nice to be able to turn a page and then go, whoa, the celebration of another colour. Maybe... Now it's about dragging colours around so that it looks like you've put some thought into it and your piece is sort of, you know, it looks like it's connected. And you can sometimes just do it with one piece of fabric where that little, that one piece of fabric appears here, here and here. And it sort of brings it all together. Got a something there what's this that'd be fresh if i could fit i'm pretty sure this appears in my bucket of scraps here but a slightly wider piece so maybe i'm just thinking of that one because that's all part of it that was from a, a sheet like a candy striped sheet that i've been ripping up for bits and pieces and I'm positive there was a slightly bigger piece. There's some more pink. Maybe I'll put that over there with that Roxy pile. Up here in the top corner, there's another little piece. There's a bit of yellow. Maybe it's yellow we need. More yellow, more yellow. These are all pieces left from when I did the... Um, um, Jesse Chorley panel. That was fun. Or I worked a panel that I got from Jesse. There's another pink. And I had um, this as part of one of the swans. There's another pink. These pink pieces were part of that as well, I think. It's like when you've got a bucket on your desk that becomes your morsels from your year of projects. It's really cool to sort of do a few things at the end that bring it all together as memories. Like there's like four different projects here and it's, yeah, really cute. To, this little pink guy might work. He's a bit stained. So I wonder if we can pop him in and under. Yeah, I like that. 
her hide the stain if that sort of we could have a bit of a layered florally thing happening there yeah I like that do we need yellow that's a bit bold isn't it it's Maybe we just need a little bit of yellow. I don't know. What if that edge stitched on there? Um, hmm. I don't mind it. Maybe there's enough yellow here to draw your eye to the tag. And I don't need any yellow anywhere else. What about this piece of lace? Can we find a home for that? It's been rolling around for goodness knows how long. I might just tuck it under there. Tuck that under there. And that is then used. Yeah, I like that. Like this guy. Yeah, he's pretty. Cut that off, that lace finally is getting down to just a morsel. I'll put it over there with the Jesse Pink, not Jesse Pink, the Roxy Pink pile. So sort of like I said in my last video, I'm tidying up fabrics and you know bits and pieces and it's slowly helping me bring color schemes in that sort of make me feel inspired so it's sort of yeah I don't know by tidying up I'm creating my next projects does that make sense Don't mind that blue popping through there. Maybe it can come up on the side. I don't know, I sort of like it there for some reason. It sort of feels like it connects the two areas with the white. Maybe I use it as a full border to edge the page. Be a challenge to stitch on because it's so lightweight. But it might make a nice frame for my piece. Being it's got that lineal stripe. I've got a little bit of it. Yeah, I think it's going to go somewhere. Maybe then that comes over to it. And that. I think that needs to come on to there. Oh, look, you could fiddle with this. This flower reminds me of the journals that we made for charity. Because one of them, or two of them, had that purple, purple tone. So that sort of reminds me of that um, project. I've got some rickrack here. Could probably put a bit of that on, couldn't we? That'd be a nice little element. She's an old girl. Yeah, let's just put a little piece of rickrack through. Why not? Layers upon layers and upon layers. These little guys, that's the last of those. Do we 
add them in. <clears throat> and do we keep them for the journal Roxy Creations project? There's Fudge again in the garage bellowing. So we don't mind that. Little guy there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, keep them. Keep them for the Roxy. There you go. See, I've pulled them away. Maybe I take one of those. <clears throat> Put that over there. Snip this yellow off because this little bit of white crocheting edge here caught my eye. And I'm thinking I might bring it in under there just as a little extra detail. Sort of dragging, I think, the white, <clears throat> the white from that big doily here in behind. I'm bringing a bit of that white up into the piece up here. It's like a kaleidoscope, isn't it, of colour. I like it. Now, because I've got so many bits and pieces on this, I really probably need to take a photo of it. And I didn't bring my phone in. Good one. Do I need this yellow? Sort of feels like it adds colour and let's just play a little bit more with that. You could do this for hours, just fiddling around. I just spotted some lace in the distance. These are interesting. Let's see. Do I? Oh, I don't mind that. It's a bit random, isn't it? Just a swoosh of lace going through there. You probably can't see it as good as it. I think it looks, looks good. Okay. Oops, that's still attached. I want that little edge to peek up the top there. That piece of pink will connect that gap that's there. I don't think we need the yellow. It's gone. I think that stripe's definitely going to stay on that edge because it picks up on the blue. There's a blue. Um, can you see that little line of blue through the center? It picks up the blue that's over here. So I think I'm going to snip that off and that's going to be stitched in there. <clears throat> somehow. There's not a lot of fabric behind there to stitch on so I might need to actually I might need to pull my whole piece over or do I just cut myself a bigger piece of calico because it's all sitting there teetering. So I've got this little bit too I need 
need something. See, the calico finishes here. So there's nothing to sort of stitch on. So I really need something to support that edge. Maybe this will be big enough, not quite. There must be something that I can just tuck in under there. I'm just gonna jump up and see what. This might, no, it's such a big piece. There's a bigger piece. Yeah, that's better. I can always trim it back, but I need something to support those little bits of fabric so that as I stitch them down, they've um, got something to attach to. So I might just slide that under there. There we go. That's better. Okay, I think I can get rid of the tag. Roughly everything is going to be okay there. Oops. Then I might start popping some pins in. And then I think I'll do a lot of camphor stitch actually. You know, just mindless mindless stitching that needs to be iron that's sort of sitting out but I do like that little frayed edge so I think that will give it a little detail get some pins and a few key spots then I'll do a little bit of invisible stitching where I just sort of hold everything in position and then I can get rid of all those pins and then really focus on enjoying the stitching and the decorative piece elements and, you know, do some little bits and bobs around the place. Who knows? I will just put it beside my chair and pick it up later tonight. I've been watching the Wednesday series. It's um, a modern take on the Adams Family the little girl, her name was Wednesday. She's a bit of a, a weird child, <laughs> to say the least. And um, this young actress is playing her, but it's sort of, she's at boarding school now. And it's got that, um, I don't know if you remember a series, Nancy Drew, where a young girl solves mysteries. And every episode was another mystery. It's got that sort of feel about it. So it's got a, a wholesome... Um, save the day young girl solves mysteries protects the little guy but then she's got this little quirky gothicy she's saying how she hates everyone but she really is starting to warm to people and we're warming to her because she's a bit of an odd bod it's gee it's well done um tim burton's behind the film like usual he's picks these topics that are a little bit out there and then makes a cult classic eventually so it's really, yeah, I think the first two episodes I was like, mm, I don't know, this is a bit young, a bit silly. But it's really grown on me because I've started looking at the fashion in the show too and how they've done her costume and her, every outfit has a collar. And this collar, it's, it, of course, Wednesday the original um, had the collar. And um, <clears throat> that's all I can see now is the way that they're dressing the characters. And I believe there's a very famous, if not Oscar winning, Emmy winning uh, costume designer behind it. And there's the, the famous thing that's coming out of it so far, which is all over TikTok, is she does this dance at the prom. And it's really kooky, just like the show Adam's Family was back in the day. And her dress... If you get a chance to watch the series, have a look at that dress. The layers of, um, I don't know if it's tulle or organza, it's just, it just flows. And she's a tiny little girl, a little actress, so it just looks gorgeous. And then they put these big black boots with it and then her hair and uh, it just, I don't know, whoever designed that, they're going to win something for it. It's so well done. And then she does this silly dance and, of course, all over TikTok, 
everyone's imitating the dance. It's because it's quite odd. <laughs> You'll have to watch the show to understand what I'm talking about. But um, gee, it's clever. The, the costumes, her costumes. And even in the very first scene, she's such a shocking child. She puts piranhas in the pool where all the, the school jocks are because they were picking on, um, I can't remember, was it her little brother or might have been her little brother. So she takes a bag, a couple bags of piranhas and puts them in the pool. And you imagine what happens then. But the dress that she's wearing as she walks through the hall of the school looking for these bullies is a take on the dress that Wednesday wore in the original series. It's just those little details. And the more interviews that she's doing, because you imagine she's like the hot thing at the moment. And she was on, did an interview with the Jimmy Fallon show, like she's the it girl. And then she's... She seems to be really interested in the textiles and the fabrics and the design side of things of the show. It seems to be right up her alley. And she was saying that in the original series, um, the black fabric had like a little swirl and the best that they could find that was similar was a tiny little rose. But it, from a distance, it did look like it was a homage to that original little dress. But um, what she said was the hard thing was the collar. There's so many whites. And they went through so many different collars. It was too long, too short, too wide, too white, too cream. And that's just classic white, isn't it? There's white and then there's white. So she really was quite in tune to the design element, I guess is what I'm trying to say out of all this, the design element of the program and the costumes and paying homage to the original series. I remember watching it as a kid. It's very much designed for kids. I don't think I'd go back and watch it now. It's a bit silly. But, um, yeah, even if you think the show may not be for you, even just watch a couple episodes and have a look at the costumes they put this actress in because, oh, really, really good. We have, I haven't seen anything like that for a little while. And the fact that the young actress, actress is in tune to all that is really good. Maybe it'll bring a lot of young people to the textile world where they have a think about their fabrics and what they do and how fabric moves on the body and... Yeah, that's good to see. It's very interesting. I would love to have studied costume design, but it's such a small industry, especially in Australia. I would have done the, the course and I probably wouldn't have got a job out of it. But I can certainly appreciate fabrics now in my own way, I guess. Okay, I think I've got this pretty secure. Everything's feeling like it's not moving. So now it's just a case of starting to get it stitched down. I do need to iron that still. So where's my needle and thread? What will I do in the way of cottons, I wonder? Maybe I start looking for some pinks and... start pulling together some of those types of fabrics ah fabrics cottons okay I might just start with stitching down these little crocheted pieces because that in itself is going to catch A lot of layers some tiny little stitches and then behind will be a bigger stitch so I'm using a beading needle like let's just not make it hard on ourselves I finally found some nice needles again 
I've been suffering because, as you know, they've all fallen down the couch and I can't get to them. Thank you for everyone's suggestions on how to get to them, but none of them are going to be any good because the side of the couch and the seat of the couch are so close together that I, I can barely get my fingers in there. And then they drop down to the underneath of the couch and there is um, then a layer of fabric that if you turn the couch upside down, you just can't see into that that area. My previous couch, I could get from the side into that reservoir where the mechanisms are for the couch, the springs and all of that. So I could retrieve everything. But this couch, they put a piece right through underneath and it's all stapled in. It's completely sealed, which is a bit of a pain because you know how it is. The odd smarty or the odd jelly bean disappears. Well, you want to try and retrieve it. Otherwise, you'll have ants in your couch. Now you'll be thinking I'm a grub. I'm not, but I will be if I can't get into the bottom of that couch. So I said to my husband, I'll, I'm going to unpick that base and I can create a flap, an access point. And he was like, don't you dare. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I think it's going to be a design issue, especially when my jelly beans disappear. Not that I'm the one that drops the jelly beans, but my husband certainly does. Crumbs. What's with boys and crumbs? So I need to flip it, have a really good look at how they've constructed it. And then maybe I might unpick a section so that I can get my mitt in there to retrieve my needles, my pins. I know there's pearls in there already. At least be able to get a vacuum cleaner head in there to try and get the crumbs. Shouldn't be eating in the couch. You're probably thinking, geez, that girl. But you know how it is. You've got to have some little snacks when you're doing your stitching. So that should be reasonably secure. It definitely needs more stitches there, but it's pretty good. That shouldn't go anywhere. I might have a bit of a play with this here and do some stitching in around. In around that floral piece. Let's get a little bit more thread. I was in such a mood yesterday and I think it's because I just couldn't get my head around this. And I was sitting there and I was fidgeting and I didn't know what I wanted to do and I didn't have any needlework and I'm like, couldn't work out why I was so agitated and all I could think about was this tag. And I was like, oh my goodness. So we put on a new series. I can't remember what it was. That's how much my brain wasn't there. And I kept sneaking out of the lounge room to come back to my craft room and have a look at the tag again and then I threw a little pile of fabrics around it and I sort of seemed to settle after that. It's like, okay, I'm going to do a flush of pink. There's three or four pieces of fabric that match. And then I, I sort of settled down and went back to the TV and relaxed and within an hour I was feeling a bit sleepy and we finished the series and went to bed. So it's, it was really playing on my mind. I felt creatively challenged, if that's such a thing. I think it is. But this morning I was like, right, the, th the, the, the plan is a flush of pink, drawing the background colours into the tag. The only one that I haven't is that yellow. Just getting some stitches into that pink lace down there. That'll hold it. Now I might go 
this way and catch that purple flower. Even though there's no purple in oh yeah, there is purple in the tag. Oh yeah, just there is a little bit of turkey work. Well, that's good. I was just thinking there was no purple. Why have I got this purple? But I do like it as an element for some reason. And it's something from the year. So it's nice to have it pop up again. For those of you watching that are involved in the Roxy Journal of Stitchery and are going to participate in the next six months of prompts down the garden path, have you got your ideas worked out in the way of colour scheme and how you're going to um, store it? What are you going to present your piece on? It's a lot of fun mulling it around. Okay. That's pretty good. That's going to hold. I'll just sneak the needle up to that little pink flower. Catch him. And that in turn will catch that little pale pink piece of fabric. It's getting a bit short. I better knot it off. Okay, how are we going for time? I think we're coming close. Need to leave a few minutes at the end of the video so I can show you the completed piece. Gee, an hour goes quick. Most of my video, well, all my videos seem to be an hour. Otherwise, I just can't get enough done that I think is of interest to you. But, um... Boy, that hour goes quick. You just realise how much you don't achieve in an hour when you're slow stitching. Like, it just is hours of work. I'll just put a couple little stitches through here, down through this centre. Whoops. Not a big enough knot. I'll go for another five minutes. Oh, the knot's coming through. Come over here where the fabric's a little bit more substantial. Catch this instead. So the tag, the theme for that particular tag, which was week 40, it was bullion stitch. And it was the first time I'd ever done a bullion stitch. I found another embroiderer that does prompts to little mini projects. I won't say anything yet because I'm still contemplating whether I add that to my regime for the year. But she's an Australian lady and um, she was suggested to me and, oh boy, I didn't even know she existed. So I'm sort of exploring her work and her history and what she's done and just sort of enjoying the journey of 
researching her and seeing if her work inspires me and then if that's the case I'm thinking I might join in in the prompts that she offers up each um, each week and it's all about the actual stitch more so than what you're making and your composition and all of that so it's just about a stitch a little bit like what Anne Brooks did and I sort of don't mind that because it will give me new stitches. So I'm seriously thinking of doing that. And I'm thinking about just getting a hoop and just doing a little bit of stitching on the hoop. And then by the end of the project, the hoop will be just full of, hopeful, hopefully, yummy stitches. Now, this artist, you may be guessing who it is by now, but I'm not going to say anything yet because I don't know if I'll do it. She also sells a range of threads, which just look incredible. They're like all different fibres twisted together into a skein. So I'm thinking seriously about getting a one of these skeins of threads and then that's my color scheme and then my hoop and my fabric and then away we go and we see where it goes so i'm thinking about adding that to my wig because it would be nice to learn some new stitches it's always good i've got plenty of new embroidery books to explore but i'm going to use them within the roxy project So yeah, that's what I'm working on. All right, guys, if I don't watch that time, oh, I can go a little bit longer. We only need a few minutes at the end just to show you what I've done. Okay, that's good. That's holding all that lace down that top. Okay, now I can scoot down here. I think that one's caught, so get rid of that neck pin, get rid of that pin. Oh, I've lost my needle. Where are you? I wonder. I might trim that back. I'm going to unpick that. I was just looking at how much. Where's my little scissors? How much that. That piece of lace covers that rose. So I'm actually going to just trim him out of there to expose the rose. This little guy. It's a little floralette sort of shape about him. And I invisible stitched him down, so I need to just unpick those few stitches to release him. So I might just stitch that then. Change of plan there up in that top corner. I'll just put that lace there so it edges the piece. But the rose now is peeking through. Did you hear that swishing sound just then? You probably... There it goes again. We're putting some weed mat down through the garden in a few places. 
yesterday and Bandit has got himself a piece of it. It's probably about three metres long. And it's been down the back of the block, it's been up to the to house and then back down. And he's just run past my window dragging it and it's making this swishing sound and it's amusing him to no end. So I, I hesitate to take it from him because, you know, he loves it. <clears throat> it's his new toy. Can't take a little dog. Well, he's not a little dog now. He's a big dog. You can't take a puppy's toy away from him, even if it is a piece of garden weed mat that he's dragging around. He's so funny. Silly boy. Okay. That's me running out of thread. I like that little piece of lace. It's like it's netting that the rose garden is peeking through. It's a nice little element that up there. So cutting away the lace to expose in areas what's underneath. Okay, let's get this knotted off now. All right, everyone, that's most of it secured to the point where I don't think it'll fall off. Probably need a little bit more stitching through there. Now I wonder, <clears throat> I think this little guy is gonna find a home over here. All right, I'm going to pause the video just need to tuck that under there a bit more. It's wriggled away. I'm going to pause the video and come back to you with how the piece went. But I'm thinking it'll be all camphor stitched down, just lots and lots of rows of stitching, some overcast stitching, some random mark making. Just going to keep it loose. <clears throat> and then my tag will nestle in amongst it as the feature piece. There you go. Great. Well, that's come together. Lovely. All right, everyone. I will see you in a second, but probably two days will go by because I think there's a lot of work here. We'll see how we go. All right, everyone. See you in a moment. Bye. Hello, everyone. I'm back and it is completed. My flush of pink. I really enjoyed this. I think it's because I've been working in neutrals a lot lately and it was like I unleashed the pink. So it was great because I used lots of bits and pieces that were laying around too. So, <clears throat> excuse me. And that's, um, that's what I love about this slow stitch is you just need the smallest of pieces. But um, when you have scraps left over, they become something too. It's quite amazing just how far these fabric bits and pieces go. So we'll start down here at the corner. So my tag is in position and I use these big stab stitches to hold the tag down. I end up putting a tiny little X down the bottom as well just to grab that corner just to tack it down. And then you'll recall I had these little doilies poking out. So I end up picking a bright pinky red uh, thread and that became my feature thread throughout. I did run out of it halfway along so that is a different pink to that but um, it didn't really matter. I don't think if I hadn't have just told you that I don't think you probably would have realized. The little patches everywhere I just stab stitched them down. This trim along the side here if you recall I just did two rows of running stitch through it and that sort of helps drag all of that pink into the seam. Now I didn't do anything on the rickrack or the zigzag rickrack. I just, I don't know, I just didn't think it needed it. I sort of liked the white lineal line, matched the white lineal line there. I ended up putting some pink through the little purple motif. Then I went and hunted out a big yo-yo that suits. Um, edged everything that needed edging just in stab stitch, just kept it real primitive. The lace I just stitched down. I didn't end up embroidering any of the flowers, which I thought I would at the beginning. It sort of became all about embellishing. 
this little piece here was cut out of there. So to expose that flower, I just then popped it down here and did some lazy daisy stitch on it. I found some little pink buttons that uh, matched my piece. Those little flowers are there. Like you could just keep going. It just add more and more and more. And I just love how the flowers are nestled in there as the feature piece. So I'm really, really happy with it. So what I'm going to do now, I won't be able to do all this on camera because we will run out of time. I've only got about 15 minutes, is I've pinned this guy into position. So I've just got to come along with my needle and thread now and using some little stitches, it will be um, held into position then on the page. So I'll just thread my needle and it'll be little stitches on the top, a big stitch underneath. And then once that's stitched down, you can see my pins holding it, this page will have the pink one. So I just wanna get it into position too, but I need to make sure that these edges line up. So I'm actually gonna pin back to the spine once I know that that is in the right spot. And then I can stitch it down as well so it becomes part of the book. And then the last step is to stitch the <coughs> two pages together so they become one. pin up there. Once all that is secure, I'll put one in the middle as well, it can't hurt. Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm going to, I've got my thread knotted. Yep. I'm going to come up through the bottom here with my needle and just do a tiny little stitch. And then I'm gonna scoot along about two centimeters away and do another stitch, a tiny little stitch on the surface. And this is going to tack the piece To the page. I'm planning a trip to the local spotlight. That's like um, our fabric supply, craft supply business in Australia. Probably equivalent would be Michael's in America. Not sure what you'd have in the UK. Yeah, I've in the doing of this, in the making of this piece, I realised that my embroidery cottons, you know, you just your common DMC cottons, are getting a little bit light on in the way of quantity to do anything major. So I've got lots of little bits, and these cottons, I seriously believe they have been with me for about 30 years. Admittedly, I've only really got back into stitching in the last you know, year and a half. So they were around when I was doing cross stitch and things like that. And then I didn't do a lot of stitching for many years there because I was, you know, working. And there wasn't um, a lot of time. <clears throat> then YouTube popped up and it's like, wow what everyone's up to out in the world and that got me going again so when I was going through looking for these pinks I had lots of scraps of everything you know just enough to do a little bit of work and then I was on to the next one and the next one I think actually there's probably three pinks in this so I started going through my cottons and just pulling out cards where there was an itty bitty bit left really not enough for a project and um, unwinding it. I also found some that were really old. 
goodness knows where I got them. I have a feeling they were anchor. And the colours have actually faded on the top of the little piece of um, card that you wrap them on. So I pulled those out and I've made a little pile. I'll show you. A little pile of, this is my embroidery cottons. That's how much space I end up picking up. But I've made a little pile of cards where it's just like the last of the scraps. Like that one there, um, it's just not enough really to do a lot. So I'm going to take, going to take these to Spotlight and see, you know, if the colour number has changed. Have a look at the colour, see if I really need it. But even then, when I still look in, I can see tiny little cards in here. Like some of these I've had for so long. Look, I'm getting sidetracked here. Let me have a look at this guy in here. See, tiny little bits left. Like, it's not too bad, but and it's not, probably not a colour that I'd rush out and buy anyway. But you're just, you know, surprised at how many scrappy little bits are on all these cards. And I've got no black. That's the last of that. I need to put that there to remind me. Yeah, a lot of my neutrals I've run out. There's there's really not a lot there. Like, very little. So, yeah, I'm going to take some time out. Go down a spotlight. I'm going to take this card. What I should do is actually go to All Threads at um, Norman Park and spend my coins with a business, actually. Yeah, I might do that. I might go and visit those girls over there. I'm going to, what did I do with my needle? Did I finish? Uh, what did I do? I scooted along there. Oh. Did I end it? I must have. Huh. I don't know. I'll have to watch the video back to see what I did. There's a needle over here at the side. Maybe that's what I did. Yeah, so, yeah, actually, I will do that. Instead of spending the money with the big boys in town, I might go over to All Threads at Norman Park. I love, 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 love their little shop. And it's just full. The problem is I'm going to come out of there with other stuff. And that'll happen at Spotlight too, I guess. <clears throat> so... Yes, that's the plan. And I'm going to take my embroidery box and have a good look at the colours and decide, you know, is there a colour there that I could do with? You know the story. Could always do with that. We've got so many projects that I want to do this year that I've sort of been working on getting my supplies a little bit up to date. And in the process, thinking about projects and like I've said a couple of times, I'm going through my cupboards and digging out things that I'm like, oh, I haven't done that yet. You know, just finding, finding unfinished projects to bringing them back out, reconsidering their position and maybe they need to morph into something else now that I'm back on the, the stitching. Maybe... I can adapt them to suit what we've been working on. That type of thing. But it's really good. It's good to have a spring clean, isn't it? So I'm just now coming down the inside edge of this page, catching it. Certainly not going to go anywhere. I might put my hand in behind there just to didn't work. It's tricky sometimes to get these stitches. So once this page is stitched into my book, ow, I'll then join the other one, the, the bird one, and then I can join the two together and that makes the signature. I've attached below in the comments, I'm not in the comments, in the description, the playlist called Anne Brooks. 
and that is any of the videos that I've made to do with Anne's project, which is these 52 tags. And I think there's a So for the Soul journal in there as well. Not that I was making videos when I made the projects, but you can go in there and see how I put this journal together. So if you have done the 52 tag challenge, and you might be wondering what you're gonna do with all of those tags, I go through the process. Okay, so now I can get rid of my pins that held it. There's another one there, another one in the middle. Let's spin this around, I'm reaching over myself. Oh, I love that. That is so not what I expected I would do with that tag, but I just love it. I love how the color is just yeah, nothing like a bit of colour every so often, guys. I get so caught up in the these sorts of tones and that's the great thing about this Anne project is it really helped us explore colour and techniques. Okay, so that's now attached. So once I attach this one, I will then just put some little stitches around the edge just catching it all together so it's one page. And that will be it. So I might leave it at that because I am finished my book. I love it. I'm so pleased. I finally, finally finished my 52 tag book. I've got my inside cover done just because. I've got my two, because when I put the book together, I had these, these three tags plus the one I did for the girls down in Geelong left over. So I just picked my favourites. And underneath all of these tags is not only the description of what happened in the project, but I've stitched in doilies everywhere and I've got these little Velcro dots so that I can lift it up and have a little look. And they're not his, not all historical to my family doilies, they're just ones that I loved. Makes a great background behind things. And there's even little, little motifs out of crocheted rugs. And there's my back page with my bunny. That's it, and that's in my old William Shakespeare cover nice and sturdy. Love it. Well, I'm going to say goodbye and I will finish stitching this, join them together and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for joining me. Bye.